Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. Prince Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation released the public disclosure copy of their 2022 tax documents. Now, the documents are for last calendar year of 2022. It's not for this year of 2023, so keep that in mind. Also something to note, Archwell has three different umbrellas. You have the foundation, you have Archwell Audio, and you have Archwell Productions. This is for Archwell Foundation, which is just one branch of the Archwell umbrella. Now, in the report, we see that the Archwell Foundation received just over 2 million in donations. And of that 2 million, they dispersed 1.2 million to over 20 organizations. Now, these 20 organizations cover five different continents here in the US, Australia, Asia, Africa, and in Europe, which is pretty impressive, especially for a newbie foundation. Now, from the previously disclosed documents, along with the recent ones, we see that the total assets from the organizations for the first two years of operations is just over 15 million. And the total number of grants and donations that Archwell has awarded in the first two years is about 4.3 million. In the report, we also get information on the salaries and employees, and there is a noticeable increase in the salaries of the employees. The highest paid employee makes over $200,000. And I don't know, for the life of me, I don't understand why um, royalists on social media or the British tabloids is so upset that Harry and Meghan are properly compensating their employees. I don't understand that. <laughs> But then again, if you look at the way employees of the palace are compensated, it's not very well. Um, was it like 20,000 annual for, was it Kate's secretary? If I find the screenshot, I'll include it. But we've all heard that a lot of the employees for the palace take that employment as a way to network go on to bigger and better things. It's really good on the resume, but the pay is not good. But the compensation for Harry and Meghan's employees is pretty comparable to what other employees in those high ranking positions receive here in the US. But I digress. Archwell also saw a decrease in the overall expenses between the two years. The foundation spent about 1.2 million less on expenses in 2022 than they did in 2021. So Archwell Foundation essentially ended the calendar year of 2022 with just about $8.3 million in assets. It's customary for successful nonprofits to have at least two years of expenses in reserve, and clearly Archwell has that and some. Not the typical naysayers who love to critique and criticize just about everything Harry and Meghan does isn't paying as much attention to William and Kate's Royal Foundation. So we're gonna do that together. So the Royal Foundation, which is run by William and Kate in 2022, so we're gonna compare the same calendar year, donated about 14.1 million pounds to organizations and charities. And of that 14.1 million, 11.3 went to two organizations. Any guesses? One is William's Earthshot Prize and the other is Kate's Early Years Campaign. So that puts the total amount of grants in financial aid that will go to other organizations that don't belong to William and Kate at 2.8 million. So if we were to compare how much William and Kate's Royal Foundation has given out in the past two years, it totals out to about $4.9 million in donations. Compared to Archwell Foundation, $4.3 million in the same two year period. So as you can see, very comparable, 4.9 million to 4.3 million. The Royal Foundation, I believe, has been around since, what, 2009? So it's definitely over a decade old foundation compared to Archwell Foundation, which is a newbie. And looking at the information within the Royal Foundation reports, the organizations that got the money is either in Europe and Africa, as opposed to Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation, which dispersed funds into five different continents. If we also look at the documents for the Royal Foundation, the salary for the highest paid employee of the Royal Foundation 
is significantly less than the salary paid to Archwell's highest employee. One of the main talking points of those within the UK tabloids has been that Archwell is not successful because they brought in $10 million less in donations from 2021 to 2022. But if you look at William and Kate's Royal Foundation, it also brought in about $10 million less in the very same time period. So it's interesting that you don't see them talking about that. Remember, the Royal Foundation is a very old and established foundation with far more resources than the Archwell Foundation. So keep that in mind. Looking at the information from the Royal Foundation as well, it ended 2022 with about $7.5 million in reserve, while Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation has $8.3 million in its reserve. So again, a lot of the information from both of these foundations is pretty comparable. And the fact that Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation is so new <laughs> and is still in its formative years, I feel like it's pretty successful. We saw some articles that were comparing Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation to the Obama's Foundation and to the Clinton's Foundation as well, really going into the amount of money received and the amount of money is dispersed. And from the information that has been released this year, we're seeing that it is very much comparable to the Obama's, to the Clinton's, and to William and Kate's Foundation. And for a newbie that is under such scrutiny, <laughs> they, the Archwell Foundation, has done incredible work. Now, if the UK tabloids were really interested in seeking out royal foundations that are a hot mess, that are failing epically, perhaps they should have been paying attention to the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh's charitable trust. That is a hot mess express and has been since, well, 2017. Instead of focusing her energies being a jerk to Megan, perhaps mean girl Sophie Soph should have been paying attention to the income of their charitable trust. 30 bucks? Really, girl? I've seen far more successful lemonade stands run by kids than this. Hot mess express. But we're never going to hear the UK tabloids talk about that. And we're never going to hear those royal trolls on social media talking about that as well. Mm -mm -mm. 30 bucks. Within the impact report, we learned about the Welcome Project, which essentially aims to bring together recently resettled Afghan women through activities like cooking. So if you've been paying attention, then you know about Megan's work in the UK with the Hub Kitchen. It's essentially something very similar. And so far it's been in 11 cities here in North America. How incredible is that? This reminds me of something that I read from She Knows, which essentially said, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have consistently proven this year that they are going to launch projects under the radar, far away from the glaring eyes of their critics. It has turned out to be a successful measure in not only dispelling the myth that they are doing everything through the media, but it has also allowed their passion projects to grow. And from the incredible projects that they've undertaken this year, I feel like this sums it up perfectly. All that we've seen in this impact report does not include all of the work that Harry does with BetterUp. It does not include the work that Harry does with the Invictus Foundation, which is an entirely different foundation in of itself. It doesn't include the work that Harry does with the Santa Bale Foundation, again, which is an entirely different foundation in of itself. So for all the naysayers who look at this particular tax return and try to spin it in a way that suggests that Harry and Meghan are lazy or that they're failing, try again. According to its impact report, Harry and Meghan's Art Royal Foundation is going really well. And according to Amazon, Harry's book Spare is the most bought book in the UK in 2023. Hmm, it's amazing what could be achieved without pimping out your kids. Let's talk about these two princesses and discuss what one got and the other did not. And if you are not familiar, the woman on the left is Princess Sophia of Sweden. She is married to Prince Carl Philip. She, like Meghan, was also a commoner. However, there was a lot of pushback when she and Carl Philip started dating because she was a reality TV show contestant. Uh, she had posed topless for a men's magazine in Sweden. 
and they thought that her being a glamour model was unsuitable for a princess. She's an incredibly smart and kind woman. Um, please pause to read to learn a little bit more about other things that she was doing before she married Carl Philip. A lot of people in the media tried to say that his family was not as welcoming of her. However, Carl Philip was quick to shut that down. In an interview in 2014, he said, absolutely not, not at all. My parents and my sisters were curious about her, open and welcomed her with a big hug. She was hung out to dry in a bullying type of way, he added, referring to the treatment from the press. Sophia has also spoken out about the support she received from the royal family, saying, I felt welcome from day one and nothing else. They have both since been very vocal about their discussions about bullying and ways that they can combat it and help out, saying that having an open dialogue with friends and family, as well as support at home is an integral part of dealing with online hate, something that Meghan Markle never ever got from her in-laws. Valentine Lowe reported in the Times that Prince William's bullying attitude uh, is a huge reason that they decided to leave. And while I'm sure Meghan never expected for any of them to hold her hand and walk her through royal life, I think she was at least expecting a little bit of basic kindness from her husband's family. And just to go back to what Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia said, a strong support network is what helped them get through the worst of the bullying that they experienced. Anyways, I just really had to talk about this because, oh my God, this picture is everything to me. I just love them so much. So you mean to tell me for a couple who is not likable, nobody wants to be around them, nobody wants to talk about them, every show that you have, you bring them up. How not likable they are, how nobody wants them, how nobody wants to be their friends, how they have nothing to offer, but your whole little show is about them all the time you bring them up okay do you know what bugs me the most about megan markle girl shut the hell up the only thing that bothers you about megan markle is this right here that's the only thing that bothers you about megan markle is the fact that she's black honey because check the resume sis ain't never gave lazy she ain't never gave entitled we're talking about a self-made woman. Never gave any of that. You don't think that. You just hopped on the hate train. And you just don't like her. Because that's the popular thing for y'all middle-aged white women to do. It's not like a beautiful black woman. They got a white man loving her. Taking up for her. And protecting her. That's what you don't like about Meghan Markle. That's what you don't like about her. Go to hell. Do you know what bugs me the most about Meghan Markle? The entire... This girl is the worst example of laziness and entitlement I've ever heard. You don't believe me? Let me... I'm going to say it, okay? This picture of Prince William, Kate Middleton, and their kids, beautiful photo. But this is exactly the type of photo that the news uses when a man annihilates his entire family. Right. It, it has it has that that flavor, the matching outfits and this like very interesting smile. This smile does not reach her eyes. Now, I have been saying for at least the f past five years that Kate is not happy. Like whatever is going on, like in her life, this is not the smile of a happy woman. This is the smile of a woman who is like going through the motions. And given like the news that has been out there about Kate recently, I can definitely understand maybe why she's not super happy. Especially when there's like stuff like this out there. Like this is page six, so whatever, take it with a grain of salt. But like William having rage issues is well documented and has been. But just quickly getting back to this whole like Kate is racist thing. When I tell you I believe that with every fiber of my being, I will, like, I will never forget about these pictures. I will never forget about these pictures of Kate being, like, so afraid of, like, these little black kids in the Caribbean. I just... And listen, you can accuse me of being a Harry and Meghan stan. I will stand ten toes down on that. I just... I just can't with the whales is, honestly. And, like, this is no hate to the children. You know what I mean? Like, they're just kids. But these two... I will always have smoke for Will and Kate. It is really funny that since these allegations of Kate being the royal racist has come out, all the trolls have come out of the woodwork to defend her. They would say my sister's cousin, uncle's stepchild had mixed children and they were curious about color. 
and they know they were goddamn lying. Now, if the parents have curiosity, that is not the same as a family member having concerns over somebody's complexion. I'm sorry, but there is no defending Kate on this. It was not her place to be concerned over the complexion of Megan's children. And for those that are defending her actions, you are part of the problem. Jesus. Ooh, I live for comments like this. It gives me a chance to bust people like you out. Damn, that outfit that Kate has on looks like one of Megan's Invictus looks. But I digress. Now, Kate longs for this type of love. Look at that. Harry loves the hell out of his wife. But Kate gets this. William looks irritated as hell. <laughs> Kate wants to be held like this in the protection and loving arms of her husband. But oop, she gets this. <laughs> God damn, that was the coldest brush off ever. Kate wants this type of affection, but she gets this. Damn, Willie is always embarrassing Kate in public. And let's not forget this. No body language expert was needed. Harry is actually happy with his wife. Look at him, the man is so giddy that he is practically skipping because he has the hand of his beautiful, intelligent wife. Now go find Waldo, a.k.a. Willie, because I bet he's not with Kate. Oh, no, nah, I ain't seen nothing. <laughs> I ain't seen nothing. Matter of fact, I'm blind in my left eye and 43% blind in my right eye. I don't see much of nothing. Matter of fact, I can't even see you, sir. Hey, guys. So Harry and Meghan just announced their new project. So in one of my previous videos, I said that the R2L Foundation um, dropped an impact report for the past two years. And if you read it, you'll see that Megan secretly, you know, did some work and created the Welcome Project. The Welcome Project is currently running in eight states and Washington, D.C. And it has a connection to Megan's work with the Hub Community Kitchen in the U.K. Now, like I said, on Monday, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex charitable organization published its annual impact report revealing that megan quietly launched a new initiative this year that was inspired by the hub community kitchen that she supported in her royal role in the uk which if you don't know what that is that is when she helped the victims of grenfell and the women in the uk come up with that community um, cookbook anyways the welcome project is a program that supports women led programming for recently resettled Afghan women to help build more inclusive and connective communities. Some of the states where the hubs are currently being run, here are some of the places where the hubs are currently being run. As you can see, California, Texas, Washington, DC, etc. And we already have some of the stats for the Welcome Project. 98.8% have made a meaningful relationship or friendship, and 97.7% have boosted their sense of social connection and decreased loneliness, and 98.8% agree their culture and lifestyle have been, have been welcomed and treated with respect, which is absolutely wonderful. And in the impact report, it said, we know that when women are well-resourced and empowered to direct their own futures, they not only build a better life for themselves, but also dram dramatically improve the lives of those around them, their families, and their communities. In other words, supporting women means supporting communities.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.